So several of you will probably remember this contraption that I made in a previous episode. This is a recycled God Hand clipper, a little plastic model clipper with a, with a very small kind of razor sharp blade, a very thin blade on the end. And uh, what I did is uh, previously I chipped the end off of that thing. So I went ahead and forged the handle into basically a threaded hole on one end and two mounting holes on the other. And then we've got this little air cylinder right here, this guy, which actuates the cutter to clip parts. The robot will pull a part out of the mold, bring it over to this clipper, which is mounted to the molding machine. And then this air cylinder, which is driven by the robot controller, will clip a part. So the issue is, is that although this cutter is pretty expensive and really nice when you first use it. After about 10,000 automated clips, the blade gets dull, such that uh, it doesn't completely cut through your part. And what happens is because the blade is so thin, it's kind of like pushing a razor blade through a piece of plastic. And 90% of the sprue that we're cutting off will cut, but the last 10% remains hung on there because um, this cutter doesn't actually have a large rake angle, so it slices into the plastic, but it can't actually pop the, the remaining part of the, of the sprue apart, you know, the part of the, that hasn't been cut. So I went and got some more inexpensive clippers. These are basically punched sheet metal clippers, and these have a much larger rake angle, like a 45 degree rake angle. So here's the old one. Now here's the new one and you can you can see we got like a 45 degree rake angle so what happens is even though this cutter isn't as sharp as the fancy one below it provides enough force to actually break the remaining strands of plastic apart after the cut has occurred you know so there's there's like a little string of plastic remaining after you cut but this large angle will actually pop that thing you loot so the mission today is to pull this guy off and then replace it with our cutter. All right, so the first thing we want to do is basically cut the, uh, the rubber handle off of our cutter. I bought five of these in a pack on Amazon. So I got my old, my old knife here and we'll see if we can slice this, this handle off. And then they got this spring here, which isn't really needed uh, for the use case of this cutter because we have a, a double acting air cylinder. So the blue and the red lines are push and pull, which is nice. Now I've done some preemptive work on this. So here's the one that I've worked on already. And I attempted to anneal this steel. So this this entire assembly has been fully hardened such that the cutter tip is, is hard so it doesn't wear out from cutting. So what I did is I used the uh, propane torch and I tried to heat up and anneal this steel in the back such that I could try to drill through it, but that didn't really work out. But I don't know what grade of steel this is and it may be A2 steel, which means that it rehardens when it cools in air. So not sure what it is, but I couldn't drill through it after I hit this with a torch several times in a row. Those holes that you see, uh, this hole and this hole, well, and this hole, were cut with the EDM machine because the drill bit just, it would just rake on the top and not actually bite in. It would just burn out the tip of the drill bit. So the only way to really drill through this hard steel is with the EDM machine, uh, RAM EDM machine. So I've got some footage of doing the EDM milling or drilling of these three holes into our hardened steel clipper and I will show that to you now and then we'll come back and install our new clipper into the existing kinematic magnet base. Okay we're out here at the Sodic Sinker EDM and an EDM machine is electronic discharge machining and what happens is that copper wire in the middle there with the black discoloration uh, gets an electric charge on it and it creates thousands of little sparks that eats away the steel on the handle of that 
cutter that you see. And I've mounted the cutter down to the vise with a couple of neodymium magnets, just, you know, quick fixture. You just basically magnet stick it on. So right now what's happening is the tank is filling with oil. So the entire EDM process happens under a dielectric fluid, which is a thin oil. And here the EDM process is started and the head, which is electrified, bounces up and down and creates sparks uh, between the copper and the steel of the handle. And you can see the little sparks happening and then the oil flushes out the debris, which is kind of pulverized, atomized little chunks of steel mostly. And some of it is burned oil as well. Uh, when the process is finished, the tank drains the oil. And here I am going to move the electrode to the next hole. And you can probably see the attempt that I made at drilling out that hard steel. You can see the, the effect of the drill bit basically just rubbing on the surface. So here I'm setting up the position of the new electrode and I'm going to run the same program again. Or the, well, the new position of the same electrode. And we're going to run the same program on the EDM machine. And uh, basically you just give instructions to the EDM machine for the material and the depth of cut. Here I'm setting the new zero location for the same program that we just ran with a G92 code and G code. And then I'm going to hit run. And when, when you give instructions to the EDM machine, it makes a very complicated program, uh, which I don't understand. I just basically run it. So here we're effectively starting the same program again. We're going to load up the oil to submerge the part and start cutting again. And the hopping up and down, like I mentioned, is to clear out the black soot. And you can see some of that soot under the water there. This is the most aggressive part of the profile. And you can see um, smoke emerges out of the oil. It's a, interesting to watch. Uh, you get all this, these wisping smoke patterns. And then below is black soot that's, that's depositing on the bottom of the EDM machine tank. And then uh, again, the finished cut, you can see the machine was, was cutting in a circle. And here it's basically just finishing out with uh, radial cuts. It's sizing the diameter of the circle correctly using this copper electrode. And then uh, it's done with that hole as well. So when it's finished, it drains the oil and you can move to your next spot. And we can just keep continually uh, punching holes with this same copper electrode. And you can see I've actually cut deep holes with this because there's about maybe an inch and a half or like 40 millimeters of black soot on the uh, copper wire itself. And then this is the final hole we're going to do. We'll just go real quick with this one. And again, this is forming the sides, and then uh, when it's done, it drains the tank. And that will be it for our machining of this clipper. And then, you know, fixturing is pretty easy because there's very little forces on the part. So you can just magnet mount it, and then we're back on the pinch. All right, so we're back. So here's our part that we EDM'd with our three holes even though the timeline in the video doesn't quite make sense, but that's okay. And now we will take off our old cutter. I disconnected one screw already. And these are M3 socket head cap screws. So the idea is to mount our cutter onto the same kinematic block, but still allow this to travel without us rubbing on the aluminum. So we got to stand off this side of the cutter enough to allow the screw to screw in and have a nut on the backside. The screw being the, the screw that goes through this little uh, rod end, which is a model airplane part <laughs> for aileron control. And it can screw in and out. So we can adjust you know, the travel of our cutter by me threading this, this little uh, ball bearing tip, or rod end is what they're called onto the threaded shaft of this air cylinder. And that's where our screw is going to go through and then connect to our cutter. I probably also need to put a standoff or some washers to make this whole thing rigid using our little needle nose. I don't want to over tighten it. 
because we do still need gimbling ability, which that brass ball with the through hole provides. And that's, that's kind of what a rod end does, is it fixes angular misalignment issues with your rods and your rod ends. Okay, so now we can come over and yeah, this, unfortunately, uh, right now this, this handle is interfering with the body of the hose connection. So I may have to loosen this main nut that holds the cylinder onto the pivoting mount that I made previously and rotate the entire cylinder 180 degrees so that we, so I don't have an interference with this handle. Let's see if I can flip this cylinder over 180 degrees. Oh, no, there we go. Solve that problem. Let me disconnect these. So these quick disconnects, you got to push down on the little ring there, and a bunch of sheet metal little teeth let go of the of the tube. Let me pull out the other one here. Sometimes you can one-hand it. There we go. All right. And then they also usually pivot around the, the mount. I think that's probably a M5 threaded hole in the end of this brass fitting into the air cylinder itself. Okay, so we spin that guy around. And then, uh, so this nut basically is how the air cylinder mounts into the little bracket I made last time out of aluminum. So the body of the air cylinder is just threaded, so you can pull it in and out like so. Okay. So that's tight. Okay, so I've driven these screws in, uh, and as you can maybe see, we've got almost a perfect interlocking system where the, ex the extra extension of this handle that exists basically as a strain relief for the, for the rubber overmold, which we took off, is locking into the base of our cylinder mount preventing the cylinder from pivoting, which needs to happen for the cutter to activate. I may be able to just take this whole assembly out to the grinder without disassembling this, this connection at the top. Fiddly work. There we go. There isn't very high forces on this thing, so that's that help. That's helpful. They kind of see we're making a mechanical linkage here, so. I think we're still free. Okay, yeah, let me, I'll put a little drip of Loctite on the top. I've, I've loosened this thread, so we'll allow the Loctite to kind of drip down inside between the threads. That was too much. Pull some of that off. So you can see that this thing can can move up and down, so it, it is still free, which is good. And then we can open and close. So we can stick this back on the molding machine and see how it does. Oh, let me hook the uh, airlines back. Of course, I'll have to look at the video to remember was red in front or 
I think red was in the back because that was the harder one. And then blue was in the front. Here we go. We are back in business for the homemade automated sprue cutter for the injection molding operation. So that's loaded up. Okay, here we go. So here's the magnet base. This is the other half and it pops right on. And there's where our cutter is gonna exist. Good to go. Thank you. 